life without knowledge is actually very miserable. You know, knowledge is a principal thing, actually. That's what scripture says. The Bible says so. And the Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. You see, if they have to put on ground and say, words and knowledge and wisdom, which one would you prefer? A lot of people will go for wealth, want to become a billionaire, you know. But wisdom or knowledge is the most important thing. Because wisdom, knowledge will, will give you everything. And that's why I blame people who, instead of them to get knowledge, they will want to, you know, they want to go for the fiscal thing. I heard about a great man of God right now. I mean, he's one of the greatest men of God in Africa. He wants... Um, he used to send money to go, he used to, each time he goes to Idaosa, he would take money along to go and bless him. He would always send money to him. Then, then there was no this e-bank transfer and all this kind of thing. If you want to do something, you have to carry cash. You no, know, there was no, the, Nigeria has not really improved in that time. So he would always want to, he would go there with money and give to him. One day he called him and said, into his bedroom wardrobe and said any suit and any amount of suit you want there just call it just take anything you want to take he told him sir i say what i want is not suit okay if you want money i'm going to give you whatever you want just to improve your life my ministry and whatever say sir i don't want clothes from you i don't want money from you all I want is speak a word into my life. I just want to hear a word from you. Now, it's a word that can actually transform someone. He spoke a word and told him, wherever you are, before you ever, ever had a need, the supply will be ready for you. That's what he told the man of God. So what, before, they, before there will be a need in your, in your life, the provision will be made available. Do you know from there, gradually, that man of God was driving a B2 car. After that, God elevated him from that level. And now he has ministry all over the whole world. All over the whole world. Multi-billion in US and US dollar and all that. Now, if he had collected the money from it, the Archbishop Bidausa, or he has collected the suit, the clothes from him, they will have used this money and finished. But that word that came out of his mouth, that blessing, that information, he got a knowledge. See, when you pray for someone, what you hear matters a lot. Because what you hear gives you inspiration, gives you knowledge that the man of God, this is what he spoke to my life. The knowing of that word will be the thing that will and steer up the anointing in you to make sure those things come to pass. Now he's a great man of God over the whole world. What you need is not the physical thing. What you need is a word of knowledge or a word from God or a prophecy or a prayer or a laying of hand. Now, many people don't know how to achieve certain things. Not because they cannot, but because they don't know the technical know-how. You see, this is an iPhone 6 and an iPhone X. You know, iPhone X, if you look at iPhone X with iPhone XS, which is the type my wife is having, using, is the advance of this one, this iPhone 10, this my wife using iPhone XX. Now, it's advanced of this one. The function are the same thing, almost the same thing, 99% the same thing. But there are some things in that one that is not in this one. And if you, you can hold an iPhone like this for 10 years and you don't know the function of it, you'll be using it as if you're using Nokia or whatever, Nokia 10 or whatever, con ordinary phone, just to answer phone call, WhatsApp, and uh, text, that's all. 
And you never know that you are holding a computer. Why? Because you don't have the knowledge of it. Sometimes, when you buy a product, you have to look at the, the, the manual in it. The manual gives you knowledge on how to use it and how to operate it. There are things I get, and I don't, even when I read the manual, I don't even understand it. What I go, I go to internet to search. Go to YouTube, go to internet, or no, Google it and go to YouTube and search and look at how can I understand the, this product very well so that I can use it very well. Because the manual did not give me full details of what I really wanted. Now, it is in what you know about a product will make you to maximize the use of it. Now, what do you know about life itself? What do you know about prosperity? What do you know about getting your own inheritance, enjoying your life? Now, it is the extent you know that is the extent you will enjoy your life. The extent of what you know, that is the extent of how you will enjoy your life. The extent of the ability of wealth, knowledge about money you have, that is the extent of how you will get money. You know, I, I used to have a lot of feeling that a lot of people, they reject things in the early days of life. Now, can you imagine see some young girls? When they are young, maybe like 16 years old, and uh, maybe the father said, come on, let me pray for you, get a good husband, you get a good husband. He said, no, I'm, I'm not thinking about that one, I'm not thinking about that. that don't, don't, don't pray that prayer for me, that's not what I'm looking for. Now, do you know what? You are running away from the blessing you are supposed to get at the time of need. And you know, I discover in some cases, some of those people, when the time for them to get married, they will, they may be, because the, the time they're supposed to start praying, or the prayer they're supposed to be praying for, in which he, he, she was rejecting, now, it will not materialize, the marriage will not materialize when he actually, she needed to get married. It is when she needed to get married, that time we should be bothering and asking prayer, begin to fire prayer, and she will be amazed. Why is it that husband did not come when she actually needed to marry? She never knew it was going to cause problems like this. Why? Because she has no knowledge about the issue of marriage. She has no knowledge about the issue of preparation for marriage. You don't jump into marriage when you are set. You get set for marriage almost as, from, as soon as you know life. You start preparing your life towards your, your life, your partner. You're praying about it. Like I said, I told somebody, I started to pray for my marriage right from when I was in the high school. Sec I mean, secondary school, yeah. I started praying, oh God, you're going to give me a good wife. You're going to give me a good person. I'm going to marry a good person. I'll, I'll be, uh, my marriage will be sweet and good. And that, that is it. Now, knowledge is important. Knowledge about prosperity. Knowledge about wealth. Knowledge about ministry. Knowledge on how to achieve goals, your goal, your dreams. Now, let me give you a story about, I read, read some time ago. There was this young man in those days when they used to travel overseas by ship. And um, he was able to gather some few money, you know, travel by ship to America. Or he wants to say, oh God, I want to go to America. So he got some money. And he gathered everything and he paid for his uh, ship, the t ticket for his trip. And he got into the ship. He was so excited he was going to America. He went, he traveled along with some crackered biscuits, some, I mean, biscuits and all that to eat on the road, on the way, while, while in the ship. And each, each time, the time for food, he would go inside and take some crackered biscuits. He carried, he carried along, eat and drink water, and that is it. So, towards to the end, when they sighted America, one guy just asked him, I said, my brother, are you a monk or a priest or whatever? You, are you always fasting? We discover all this time we've been on the ship for how many weeks? How many weeks? And I mean, and, and for about three months or so now, you don't come to the dining and eat. What is happening? He said, no, oh my, I said, my brother, look. I had no money. I managed to pay for my ticket to, sh I mean, to go to America. I don't have extra money, so I have to get some cracker biscuits to feed on the road. 
and people, you guys eating there, you are from big family and rich family. He said, no, you mean they never told you the money you paid for your for your journey, your flight, your flight from, I mean, to America, does, did not tell you that it include your feeding on the way? He said, no, sir. The money I paid include my feeding? He said, yes. I said, oh, I thought you people are big people, rich people, you were eating because I see people eating chicken, turkey, meat, drink, wine, all the kind of, he said, no, it's all free. The guy cried. He ran down to the restaurants and where well, they've almost sighted the, ship, the land already, where they will come down and back from the ship. He ran down to the restaurant and what he saw was leftover chicken wings, chicken legs, and what people eat remain and this guy was really hungry he has to pick some of the leftover food and ate before he came out of the ship it was lack of knowledge he never knew that what he has paid for include the feeding friends what god has paid for you he has paid for your health your salvation include healing your prosperity your well-being your salvation include the package. It's a package. When Jesus died, he paid for the price for our healing and for our deliverance. That's why you can't be tormented by witches and wizards. You can't be tormented by devil. I always want to tell people, look, it's not possible for you to be afflicted. Now, always look at yourself. You, you see, you can't be poor. Poverty is not, it's not part of the, uh, I mean, part of the covenant right of God's children. When Christ died on the cross, he made provision for what? For your prosperity, for your health. And that is why I'm here to declare, if you are sick there, I declare healing to on your body in the name of Jesus. If you are afflicted there, I command that affliction to leave you. If the devil is tormenting you with absent-minded, obsessing your mind, with depression, with stress, with spirit of anger. I reject that from you in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, there are many things that can actually hinder you. If you are the type that you have a negative mindset, negative me me interpretation to issues about life, you will actually face hindrances. Sometimes, some of the time, we think the devil is the one fighting us. We are the one actually fighting ourselves. Some of our action, some of our reaction and way of life actually can actually make God not to be happy with us. Sometimes we grieve people we are not supposed to. We offend people we are not supposed to offend. We make people to certain people is not supposed to offend to be angry with you. You show bitterness to some people. And these are this these are these are your fathers, your mothers, your elder people, or even the homeless people, the sick people, the little children that can, that don't have defend you you mistreat them. Listen to me, that child you are mistreating may not know anything about life, but this will know God is his defense. You may be suffering because of what you have done to those little children. You may be suffering because of when you make your father or your mentor or your guidance angry with you. You get angry. You treated him such a way that he's not, he's not happy. Even though you feel you are right, you are genuinely right. And you make your father angry with you or you make you do things that are so foolish that you even justify yourself and it grieved him he may be even cry or wet on your behalf or your mother it could be your guide that could be so your pastor could be it could be your pastor could be somebody who's seriously older than you do you know what happened you've done something that's not supposed to do some people who are in courtship and in engagement you did some nasty things to give the person you were in courtship with. Now, in the name of, you know, hey, I'm right. You become so bitter, so agitated, aggressive, wound the person, dare to the person, the person cried over it. Not, I'm not talking about cheating on the person, but I'm, you did something that actually wounded the person and caused a blow on his heart and mind. And feel bad, and you walked away. You know, you may discover that those could be a hindrance to you. 
our bitterness and our anger can actually cause a lot of things. I tell children of God, look, free from anger and bitterness and envy because these things can be a big hindrance to our life. And because we don't know. We don't know. And that's why we live that life. We feel it's okay with us. We are being strong. It's not all that glitters are gold. It's not. It's not because you are so knowledgeable, you are so you, you went to school, you are so educated, so you must be rich, or you are so beautiful, so handsome, so you must marry a good person or a good person or whatever. No, marriage or richness does not depend on how beautiful or handsome or how educated you are or how dressed you are. It's all depend on what you sow is what you reap. It's all depend on the grace of God upon your life. Now I want to let you know this. I want you to put your mind. Yes, this is turning around here. Have a new knowledge. Have a new mindset about life. Let learn how to program your life. Now there are things people talk to you ten years ago, fifteen. You kick against them. They told you this thing. You are angry because when they were telling you these things ten, twenty years ago, now your eyes has opened towards some of these things. You need to go back and repent. I'm not saying you go to anybody to confess and tell. you need to go back to God and say, God, what, what, where have I found myself? What mess have I put myself? Let God punch you, watch you, cleanse you, renew you so they can have a new life. Now, the greater things are coming on your way. Just believe God. I want you to plan. Read books. Read books. I mean, be very careful on the kind of book you read. Not negative book, but good, good books. Read Bible. Put yourself now in a positive mindset and know for sure that you must make it. Listen to me, friends. There's nothing that stops you from getting what you need in life. There's nothing that stops you from being great. My prayers are all my children, those who are with me, those who are working with me, those who have ever lived with me, those who are with me. I mean, they, they served me well. They should be blessed. They should be blessed. Now, hear me this. I Every one of you who are with me, whether in Covenant Life Church or in a blessed one way in your ministry or through reading of my books or listening to this audio, I'm blessing you. Listening to this now, right now, I declare that your life will become a testimony for others. Speak, the, the things of God will speak life into you. Life will be sweet for you. Therefore, I stretch forth my hands towards you. If you are sick, receive your healing right now. If you are afflicted, be delivered from that affliction. I pronounced unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Where people are struggling, you will never struggle. Where they are, where they are passing through disappointment, loss of money, you will never lose your money. Your money that's been tied down somewhere. I declare that payment will come to you in Jesus' name. I declare business that have been frustrated before, let there be a repayment. I pronounce that whatever you've lost, regain it. That appointment that has been scattered, that proposed proposal that has come to naught, may God pay you back. That promotion, I release it to you in Jesus' name. I declare you to settle in life, prosperous and victorious in Jesus' name. But to let you, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to say a big amen. I believe that I am meant for the top. I believe things will work out for my good. I believe greater things are happening to my life. And I believe I'm, I'm not there yet, but I'll be there. Because something is taking me higher. And you that is listening to, listen to me, Everything you have desire in life, you are going to get it. Good wife, good husband, good children, car, property. But one thing I want to let you know, serving God is the most important thing. If you don't serve God, if you don't give your life to Christ, you have lost the mark. Be honest to yourself. If Jesus come today, will you make heaven? Now be honest to yourself. Serving God is the most important. You must give your life and your heart to God. Not just give your life. You must be dedicated and focused with the things of God. You must be focused. Where you have gone wrong, don't be, be humble yourself to always tell God you are sorry. If you make mistakes and do something that is nasty, and you disobey, do something, commit sin, don't, don't always come to God. Say you are sorry. I mean, just tell him you are sorry. But one thing is certain. Never go back to your vomit. You will keep serving God and serve Him all the days of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I know in serving God, there's blessing, there's hope, there's testimony. Nothing is greater. I value the service of God more than anything in life. And I believe God will take you higher in Jesus' name. God bless you. 
as you listen to this message again and again and again and don't forget pass it to others share it with others so that they can be blessed you are blessed in jesus name amen